Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are talking about horsepower! Urgh, making all that horsepower! Yeah, well we've already made the horsepower technically. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to set up a way that you can uh, basically see your horsepower much like you would on a dyno through the HP tuner scanner. Now let me preface this. This is not always the most accurate way. In fact, it is not the most accurate way. A dyno is the most accurate way of reading horsepower on our vehicles. But the late uh, generation Gen 4s and all the Gen 5s that have the torque based system, the virtual torque, all that stuff, they have a torque parameter that can be pretty accurate in there. It is literally just called engine torque. We need to be logging that along with RPM. Uh, I've got a log pulled up that's got both of them in there. We will throw a horsepower uh, math, custom math parameter in here so we can see what our horsepower is based on what the, the ECU predicts the engine torque is. Now, that being said, that engine torque is very dependent on all your parameters being kind of dialed in, all of your fuel maps, stuff like that. Everything's got to be in tip-top condition. It has to be pretty darn accurate to get an accurate torque out because it all, what it is is it's a lot of data in being jammed through all kinds of math, torque out. So if any of this data in is incorrect, it will skew the output. But if you've got this stuff kind of dialed in, people have found that the output on the torque is pretty spot on or pretty close. You know, what we would consider really good. And as we talked about on some of the other ones, this might be a way of tuning your timing. Instead of just doing timing versus knock, you could set this up, watch your horsepower and torque numbers, and make adjustments to your timing advance and see, oh, hey, I crossed the threshold. I'm no longer making uh, more power in this, so there's no reason for me to advance the timing beyond this. Technically, that should work for this. I've not done it myself. That is going to be uh, something that I do here on the Super Auto as I get the fueling dialed in on it and I start to do the timing for the twin charge setup. I will use this setup, I will document it, give you guys an idea of what I, whether or not it works. But let's jump in here. Oh, and, and we're going to be talking about a formula. This formula is a standard formula, and it's like RPM times torque uh, divided by 5252, which is what they call the th crossover. If you look on a uh, dyno graph, all of them should cross over in the same position based on this formula. This formula is set in stone, uh, so if... And, all of your horsepower calculations are always based off of torque. So that's why theoretically it should work in this application. So what you're going to need is a PID to log engine torque, which I have on this log right here. In fact, we're kind of at a high peak right there. Let's go down here where we were making 30 foot pounds, 30 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it, it probably won't look good on the horsepower right there. And then you also need your engine RPM. After that, Let's go up into our math parameters underneath tools, and we want to go down to user math. I've already got one set up, but we'll do something cool on top of it. So if you open up a new user math on here, you're going to have your engine torque times your RPM. But then you see how I added these brackets, these parentheses on the outside of it. This is to make sure that that math is done first because if you don't have those in there, it can skew your math off. Technically, I'm not sure how smart HP tuners are in doing it where it has to multiply before it divides, but if we add these parentheses around this multiplication section, that will save us some headache down the road. And then we divide the result by our 5252. The cool thing is we have a unit for horsepower, so you can actually drop down, choose horsepower, and then we'll put a decimal on there. But say we wanted to do, uh, let's copy this, control C to copy that. Say that we wanted to do uh, rear wheel horsepower. So what we could come in here and say is we will put our expression on there. We will put another parentheses around this thing. And then we will multiply it. We use the asterisk for multiplication by 0.8. And that will give us 80% of it. Basically, we're saying that we have 20% drivetrain loss. That's just spitballing out there. Uh, same ordeal. We'll come in here, change this over to horsepower, put a decimal on there. Boom. So now what do we do to view it? The easiest way to view it is come down into your charts. We'll right click on here. I got a boost one that's set up that's not working properly. So let's just replace that one. Uh, we'll come down into our user math where we just created our user defined one and we'll add horsepower. 
And I'm going to go ahead, I'll relabel this one horsepower. We'll just put HP. I'm going to add one more below it. And we're going to put the user math for our rear wheel horsepower right beside it. So we can see how those compare. Boom. And we'll put this one rear wheel horsepower. Okay, so now we've got two values on there. If we move this, we start scrubbing it, it should start reading in. Okay, so if we go back, we're looking at our engine torque. It's highlighted over here on the left side. You can see that uh, as our we're not making much horsepower down in the lower RPMs, but if we get over here into the higher RPMs, 2,500, 26, 28, almost 3,000, we're making around 250 horsepower or 200 at the wheels. We'll go all the way over here where I really kind of open this thing up, see what we've got, see if I get over 3,000 uh, RPMs, 3,200. So 3,200, 3,260. So we're making about 312 at the crank with 250 horsepower at the wheels. Let me see if I've got another log that's got a couple more pulls. This is probably back when I was doing tuning. This was, boom, there we go. We're hitting almost 5,000 RPMs coming up on red line. And we peak out at 840 horsepower on this setup. And that's with a 914 foot pounds of torque. That's probably not entirely accurate. I was probably messing around with the uh, speed density tune at this point in time. And if that thing was off, as I said, uh, there's a good chance. Uh, yeah, there's a good chance that some of these numbers are going to be off. So keep that in mind. As I said, it's not the most accurate. But we'll just go ahead and say, yeah, man, I made 840 horsepower. Woo, it's 675 to the wheels. Uh, in all honesty, whenever this truck was set up around that time, it was probably making closer to 700 at the crank, uh, just given how much boost that we were running. You can do a sanity check on that if you're on a turbocharged engine, because you should know that if you if you run atmospheric on your boost, if you're running 14.7 PSI, you should be doubling your horsepower. So on this truck, which is what the 5.3 makes something about 380, so if you're doubling that, you should be at 750 horsepower, which this is not. This thing was probably only running 13 horse or 13 psi at that point in time. So, but that's neither here nor there. Something cool, as I said, you can use it whenever you're doing your timing adjustments to see it. You you technically don't need the horsepower side of it. You could just use the engine torque calculations off the timing adjustments to see if you're starting to lose power. Theoretically, that should work. We'll find out in another video down, down the road some other point in time. But this is just something cool to kind of throw out there. It's, it's a good way to get used to building some custom math. We touched on some of that in the earlier scanner video that came out last week about how we use custom maths, uh, the charts, things like that, and filtering on the graph. So this gives you a decent idea of kind of what's going on. So, hey, uh, you know, just some fun stuff. What we got coming up this week, we've got check valves to install into super auto get this thing back on the road then we're going to start super auto tuning you know uh we're going to we'll start with speed density tuning then we'll move into map tuning uh, because this thing is actually probably going to have to have some serious map tuning uh because of well i don't know it technically it shouldn't but i think that we're probably going to run the math sensor higher in the range than we normally would we may still end up, end up doing a math delete on this and running full speed density, but I love math for just cruising around town. This is a weird situation because I said uh, the truck is getting into power enrichment really early because it makes boost just boom off the line. Like by uh, 1,000 to 1,500 RPMs, you could be making 3 PSI on this setup right now. It drives like a diesel. feels like the turbo is always pushing you. Uh, so there will be super auto tuning. Uh, I got to do some more torque management videos. Uh, so... Other than that, thank you to all the new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the button in the corner. We've hit 1,900. We will break 2,000 before the 4th of July. No doubt in my mind. Uh, we'll probably break it in the next week. Before the end of June, I would say we will have over 2,000 subscribers. That's because I have the best subscribers out there. I want to thank all the new patrons. Uh, you guys are what's helping me to drive even more content. You've got great suggestions. Your support's been nothing but the best. Throw a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for stopping by the garage. <laughs> Love you guys, you're the best.